have done in our life. Father, when we look back and see all what you have done, we realize that it is not because we are very clever, not because we think that we are something, but it is because of your mercy. We are grateful unto you. We thank you very much for all what you have done. 
thank you for what you are doing now. Thank you for what you are still going to do. Because you are a faithful and merciful father. You never lost anybody. You are the man of one. You are the God of battle. The great God that rules in the affairs of all men. We are grateful unto you. And be forever grateful for all what you have done for us. We die and so there forever, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, as we want to look into your word this very much, we pray that through the loving kindness, you will open our understanding, you will inspire our heart by your word. Just a little, just a little word we're going to hear. Father, pray that inspire our heart to, to draw us closer unto you and that our life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And at the end of the day, we will not lose our reward. Even here on the heart, as you have promised that we have 100% and reward to support. Turn out of pages, we pray that you will help us to put this word into our heart and to make use of them. Thank you for answering our prayer. Pray that right from beginning to the end, let your name alone be exalted forever. Let absolute control of everything, everything be taken by you. Thank you, everlasting God. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are looking into, you know, like uh, as we have been thanking God and bless the name of the Lord, uh, we can clearly see the great and mighty thing that Lord, the Lord has done for us. And we what we want to look into today is something uh, that is like um, we're giving back to God. You know, like what God has done for us, we cannot, I mean, we cannot pay back great and mighty things that He has done for us. But it's just like part of giving back. Our consecration. Why turning many to righteousness? Our consecration. Why turning many to righteousness? That is the topic of what we are sharing together today. And I believe that as you pay attention, uh, you might not uh, gain the entire something and then have it in your mind. It depends on the memory. If you've got a big memory, uh, you might be able to uh, accumulate all what we're going to share today. But the very important thing there is that as you have prayed, Lord, I will not miss your blessing, and your blessing will not miss me. Once you have this kind of this prayer in your heart, you pay attention and you concentrate definitely the Lord God Almighty will bless us in Jesus' name. We just quickly want to look at it that what is consecration? What is consecration? And you can see very clearly that when God in his mercy preserves our life, he protects us, God is not asking us to do something for him free of charge. That's why that he has given his only begotten son to die for us in the cross of Calvary. It is not because we ask for it, but because of his love towards us. He left his own glory and he came down to this world. And look at if you as we have told you, you are born again Christian. And if you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to just look at this topic we are sharing and then think about where am I going to spend eternity? Ask that question. Because after a man or a woman might have closed his eye to death, it's either he go to the right side or go to the left side. So while we are here, let's do something. And that is when we talk about consecration. It consecrates our heart unto him. As he consecrates his life to us, 
giving his life for us, died for us in the cross of Calvary, not because of we pay any money, not because of uh, our importance, but because of his mercy. He left his own glory, came down to this world, shed his blood in the cross of Calvary, because of you, and because of me. Why? For me to have freedom, for me to have liberty, for me to, I mean, to know the purpose why I am on this earth. Many people, like what you have said, they have houses, they have money, they have everything, but they do not have the peace of God in their heart. You can buy everything, you can buy a car, you can buy a house, but just for the time being, it cannot give you peace of mind. It's only salvation when a man turns away from his iniquity and turns to his maker and accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior. Through that, that individual will gain what he has lost. It means that he gain peace of the relationship with his maker. And that many who want to travel down maybe from Africa, from Asia, from Middle East, South America. Maybe they want to travel to one place or the other. They need a visa to travel down there. And also, as a human being, we travel from this earth to eternity. When a man will get to a pali gate, as we get to the immigration check in all the airports, they check our document whether if it is true or not, that is also what Christ has given us to us. He has given, given us visa to the eternal kingdom. We are we're going to spend our life with peace and joy and happiness forever and ever. <clears throat> Praise ye the Lord. We thank the Lord for what he has done for us. That is why consecration is very, very important. What is consecration? Let's just look at it in a, a normal way where we say um, educated or education or dictionary way of uh, learning. Consecration means to make a holy or to dedicate to a higher purpose. Consecration is to give because when you are to uh, sacrifice, I mean, consecration also is sacrifice, it's a vow, it's a dedicate, dedication, devote. When we devote all, devote all this, is what is being called cons consecration. Now, let's look at it in. Uh, in the in the world where we are a teacher that is going to mark an exam if he doesn't pay attention what happened he will either mark down or, or mark mark higher than normal something and I did, that is see why many send their uh, result to be remarked. Maybe the teacher or whoever is doing something is not paying attention. He doesn't consecrate his mind, neither is he consecrate anything, just marking it anyhow. So that is one side. The other side, an auditor checking taxes, taxes return. He must consecrate his mind at that very moment so that he can achieve, I mean, uh, good results. That is one thing that we can see. Also, an engineer building a dam or do it in a way whereby it will not go to be a dam that is going to be killing uh, people or maybe building a dam for where they're going to be uh, keeping fish. If he doesn't build it very well, the fish is going to be escaping into the uh, bigger sea. And then all his labor will be in vain. That is why it's very, very important that when 
we understand what is consecration is, uh, we put our mind and attention to it. Let's look into uh, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter twenty-nine. Second Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, verse five. I will read from verse five. The gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the the hand of artificer. And who then is willing to consecrate his service? day unto the Lord. When we look at it, consecrate service unto the uh, example for the teacher. Consecrate the service unto the unto the uh, auditor to the government. An engineer consecrate his service to the but for a Christian say who is this I mean, he said, uh, and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Then the chief of the verse six, then the, then the chief of the fathers and prince, princes of the tribe of Israel, and the captain of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the kings. Walk offer willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talent and 10,000 drum and of silver 10,000 talent and of brass 18,000 18, talents and 100. 100,000 talents of iron, and they with whom precious stone were found, gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehel, the Gersonites. Then the people rejoiced for that they offer willingly, because with perfect heart. They offer willingly to the Lord, and David, the king, also rejoiced with great joy. Can you see, when we are talking about consecration, there must be a willingness. And when we do it, we must do it with a perfect act. I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. And those who know me very well, I mean... I've seen some people say all the time talk about consecration, consecration, consecration. But one thing we must understand is that when you remember where you are coming from, where the Lord picked you out, then you want to do your best to consecrate your life back to Him. Consecration, why turning many to righteousness? I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. As a believer, you give your time and sacrifice unto the Lord Jesus. You make a vow and dedicate your life to serve the Lord. Also, you devote your time and life to follow the Lord. And we see this, that, like as I said, we have already looked into the teacher, we have looked into engineer, and we have looked into auditor. Where we see other group of people, and we have looked into the Christian that I mean, a Christian willingly of the, the offer with a perfect heart, and they do it not just perfectly, willingly. And also, we see many in the world dedicated their life to mundane things like the affairs of this world, those things that do not have eternal value. That is where they dedicated their life unto. That is what they are doing. And ours should not be so. And we should learn that this only one life, one day, we're going to account for what you have done in the body. So that's why it's very important that when we are consecrating our life, we turn many to righteousness. And I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name.
as we see the people in the world making it also in the old testament and in our time many due to consecration and commitment achieve great mighty things bible make us to know that abraham was very rich also bible talk about isaac and jacob and we see in the people in the world they achieve great and mighty things also god give us the privilege to achieve great things in, in his kingdom and i pray that god almighty will help us in jesus name um i we just at this point uh go into different uh points that i want to uh talk about i uh, will still talk about three points but i want to mention this point before we move forward now that's a different dimension of turning many to righteousness different dimension one Tony Sina from their sin to gain the righteousness of the Savior. How do we do that? By preaching. By preaching the gospel. And if you are not preaching the gospel, brethren, don't say because of the oh, lockdown, because of this, because of that. Uh, let's begin to, even though if you can't go out there, let your prayer concentrate and i mean go into that area and seriously cry unto god that god almighty at this time god will save more so in jesus name and like as i say different dimension point two influencing saints to seek first righteousness and the kingdom of god how do we get that one done? By encouragement. We encourage the saints, we encourage the brethren, and we let our life be a shining of blessing anywhere we find ourselves by encouragement. We live a life that will bring glory to the name of the Lord, and people around us see our life and they are being encouraged and they will continue turning into the Lord and hold on to lord to the end other point how christian how christian by their speech and lifestyle could accidentally in that many in that many neighbors co-workers from turning to righteousness how can that one happen by bad attitude and these are all the area we need to examine ourselves. Uh, I might not just go into pattern of partial, they are actually the way we would normally do something, but I want you to take a point that the way you talk, where you walk, the way you behave in your neighborhood, and be a shining of blessing. Don't allow the attitude or your behaviors or the way you talk, those who have come to the kingdom of God, do not let them run away or escape. Or say, if this person is a Christian, I don't want to be a Christian. Ours will not be like that in Jesus' name. Now, other point which I want us to also do the speech and lifestyle of. The one who will turn many to righteousness in their lifetime. If you are to be a channel of blessing, my brother, my sister, if you are to be a channel of blessing, what actually the life must be? You must be holy. Let's look at the scripture as we are uh, in Romans chapter, Romans chapter uh, 12, if we are to be a channel of blessing, 
let's see what the scripture says in Romans chapter 12. In verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that he present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Brethren, we need this in our in our life if we are to be a shining of blessing. And whatever thing we do now, that is what we're going to, if we do it perfectly, with the perfect heart, with the willing heart, it will stand the test of time. But if we do it just anyhow, uh, brethren, we need the grace of God. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. The role of faith and patience is very, very important. The role of faith and patience is very, very important. Some effort to available for turning many to righteousness. We, like as I talk first, that uh, if we have to turn many sinners to be righteous, we either use tracks, letter, maybe we use blog, or we use social media, we use post, prayer over the community. Community outreach, showing love, helping the poor, giving to the community, volunteering in food bank, and so, and so on and so forth. There are many ways whereby God can use us to bring many into, into his kingdom. And I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. The message today is not a, a long that I have to say point number one, point number two, and I'll just keep on going and going and going. What is important is that let me look at my life. Look at your life. Am I in my life producing? Because you can have point number this, point number that, and you write everything down. It is not the hearer of the Lord that are justified. It is those who are doing it. You doing what you are hearing. You hear just a little out of it, and then you go out there and you do something, or you sit down there, say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You know, many today, they either use social media to do, maybe they show their, themselves there, and they show how they stand it, they do a lot of things. They, why others, they either send a kind of a story that people read at the end of the day, see, what should be my game after everything? So, like I'm saying, I'm sharing with us, uh, I myself that I'm talking, I'm not saying to you that, uh, oh, I am uh, the most uh, best. I'm, no, 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 no. All what I'm saying, I myself, I'm hearing it. And then it is my prayer that the Spirit of God will also quicken me as He will quicken you so that I have to look at my life. What is the profit is He making to the kingdom of God? I can write, I can read, I can write, I can see a lot of things. And then you write it down. You can even write book on basis of what I, I, I say to you. That is not the point. The point is that a little you hear, a little you gain, you take it out there and do something to the glory of God. First, remember, put it in your heart. You know it before, but you, you meditate again that if not because of what Christ has done for me, maybe just look at it. You have hope now, you have peace of God in your heart, and then you, 
if they talk about anything by the special grace of God, I will make it. That is what you are working towards. But there are thousands of people very close, close to us that we do not have any impact in their life. You have a load of uh, teaching from this Sunday, from other Sunday, from this person, from that person. But what have I used it for? If the law should come to be and then examine me, what will I say to him? That is what you should think about. Many at times, many of us will say, okay, uh, you want it to go this way, you have to put it this way. You can put it whatever way you want to put it. The important thing there is that what I am, what you are hearing, what are you doing about it? The one you have heard, what have you done about it? We are hearing now that the helpful tools available to turn men into righteousness, tracks. If it's not the day of uh, going out for tracks, you don't have tracks in your pocket. The brother you are going out, do you have any tracks in your, in your bag or in your pocket? No, because it's not the day of evangelism. Check yourself. If you are, if you, if you are, you are a kind of person to track, then you can say, Lord, I thank you. And then don't just keep it in your pocket. Use it for the expansion of His kingdom. Use it to turn in many, turn many to righteousness. Other channel, letters. You can write letter back to write letter to anybody. But if you write any letter, let's look at it. Let's examine ourselves. Examine yourself and see whether if you are in the field. If you use any letter for evangelism or drawing many to righteousness, I need to check. I'm checking myself as I'm hearing what I'm saying. Like as I say, it's not when I say point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four, and I put every point, point, point there. The important thing there is that examine yourself at this very point. See the time you have been writing letter. If by the grace of God has helped you to write the letter, to send the letter to people, and then through it, they have given their life to Christ, glory be to God. Blogs. I mean, those who are using blog, blog, blogger, I mean, the blogger. I don't know who any of us who are, who are blogger, but then you can use different channels. And social media, you can use post. You just post letter, letter of, I mean, maybe trust it inside, and then you write a letter of salvation on the end. I don't know whether if you are doing it. Honestly, I've not done it. And I'm learning from even what I'm saying now. And I want you to do something, my brother. I want you to do something, my sister. It's not when I say point one, not point two, point three, and you write everything down. You know, it is possible. If we don't, I mean, we can either get to our uh, regional overseer, letter of salvation, that anybody who read it, we, we give his life to Christ. And with tracks, we started posting it, dropping it as people. How many people? They have dropped something on your door. They say, if you want to do this thing, if you want to do that one, and you have done it. So let's do that, and God Almighty is going to help us in Jesus' name. That is one part of it. Prayer over community. What is your prayer point concerning the community where you are living? Any of our members here, uh, where we are here, those who are conversant, coming to church regularly, just ask them, what is a prayer point for the city of Slough? And the Lord will confirm it in Jesus' name. It might be maybe through where we are here, it might be maybe why by the grace of God we are moved to other, 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 other place. But the important thing is we have a prayer that we have launched that by the special grace of God, the Lord God Almighty will save the city of Slough and so forth. And these are what we have said and we make everybody to know about it. We pray every day. I don't know during the time of pandemic, maybe our brothers and sisters are not praying. 
we still continue praying that God Almighty, we have said that word out, and the Lord will confirm it in Jesus' name. Community outreach, showing love, helping the poor, give it to the community. Just check yourself. Are you doing that? And that is what is important. It's not just, like as I said, it's not just point this, point that, point this, and put it down. No. The important thing there is that look at my life and look at your life. Let's look at each other life, individual life and see that, am I doing this? That's the important thing I want us to see in this uh, message. That what I'm hearing now, am I doing it? Am I preaching the gospel? And let's assume that because of the pandemic, you cannot go out. Like as we have said, maybe when you go out, I mean, there are some of different things that we are hearing. But you can send cards through a letter. You can send a letter. You can either go to the social media and you can use uh, this uh, uh, social media, Facebook. You can use it in a rightful way by sending a kind of a message that people will read and they will give their life to Jesus Christ. You turn them to righteousness. I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. We have some uh, points that I just want to share with us before we round up. Uh, when we talk about consecration, the picture and the purpose of consecration what are the purpose of consecration? And what is it? What does consecration achieve? Why should I consecrate? These are all the questions that will come into your heart. Point two is the practice of consecration in turning many to righteousness. The practice. Praise the Lord. I said the practice, you know, when the practice is what I've, I have already even said it. So the practice of turning many to righteousness, it's either you use blog, uh, or you use letter, or you use tracts, or you use social media, or you use posts, or prayer for the community. That is, the, that is the, the practice. Point number three is the power of consecration. The power of the consecration. I pray that God Almighty will help us to really have the, this power. And what are the benefits? When you have the power of consecration, what are the benefits of consecration? What makes consecration worthwhile? And you do it in the will of God. You do it according to what God wants you to do. And once you begin to do it and begin to seek the face of God, calling upon the Lord, the Lord will open our eyes to see me, when we talk about consecration, it's like you look back, see where God has brought you out. And you say, Lord, I must give something back. You know, you are giving something back. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Where I was uh, working now, I just want to quickly share this thing before we go to that point. This woman is our principal. I think the school was uh, started in 1994. Do you know, as we are talking now, the, the woman has already retired. He has a, a kind of a, a program. It's a white lady. He has a, a program in Uganda that every year people will come together and they, all the teachers and anybody want to go, they will go there. All the clothes, they come go with the bag of uh, clothes and everything. This woman, I don't know. Maybe he just do it because of his love in his heart or in her heart. I don't know whether he is a Christian or whether he's not a Christian. But look at this woman. He set up this thing. After he has left almost more than maybe 10, 15 years now, the program is still going on. Do you know that this woman have adopted daughter in... Uh, Sierra Leone, all the, all the country of, uh, even in Uganda, they have adopted daughter. I think it must happen to three or four 
uh, daughter. They are not white. They are black. But they adopted them into something. And this is another one we are talking about. You are not advanced to that level. But I'm saying this thing that there is a purpose. Being a Christian, you can turn many to righteousness. And the Lord God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Like the picture and the purpose of consecration. The picture and the purpose of consecration. Let's look at that very quickly before our time runs out. One, when anyone who has given his or her life to Jesus, the next step is to consecrate their life to who has rescued them from hell and to have to have a close relationship with the savior of their soul. Let's stop there. Now, we're looking into this very point that when a man or a woman gives his life to Christ, like as I was been saying, what makes you to consecrate, to close to God is that you do not want to go back to where you are coming from. If where you are coming from is not, is, I mean, mine is not really, it's not a place whereby it's not peaceful. I mean, mention anything you want to talk, I mean, dangerous, anything, then I don't want to go back to that kind of life. And that's to see why this life that I've been redeemed, I want to give it back to my maker. I want to serve him. I want to do, I don't have any passionate ambition that I want to become this, I want to become that. It might be cool, some people might have it, but then mine, this only one life, to serve the living God. And you give it back to him. You rescue us, you rescue me, you rescue me from hell, from destruction. Therefore, I should have a close relationship with my Savior. In the light of our Lord Jesus Christ, you pray daily, you preach his word, love him with all your heart, Make him number one in your life. Consecrate, consecration is evidence of our love to Jesus. Also, is going extra mind within. Consecration draw us closer to God because of everlasting reward. You know, also when you look at it, why? to, I mean, the purpose of consecration. Purpose of consecration, one of it is because everlasting reward, whatever thing you do here is what you are going to gain over there. Nothing good for nothing. You don't, you don't have time for God. You have time for your work. You have time for your study. You, I mean, your work is number one in, in your life. You say, ah, I need to work. I need to. At the end of the day, many who have Rolls Royce, they have Lamborghini, Bugatti, private jet. They have maybe 100 children. I've seen many of them. But by the time they close their eyes in death, would they bury them with their Lamborghini? Would they bury them with whatever thing they thought they have? No children will say, ah, it's my daddy or it's my mommy. I must go to the grave together with him. If they do that, what do you think is going to happen? And then if they say, ah, because when this man is going on his way to the other side, on basis of what we have had, let us put this uh, 10 million pounds and they put it inside the portfolio. I mean, they put it inside the bag and they, they put it and they let people around there know that we are giving this man is taking 10 million pounds. That is this opening to people. Can you see? So that he can have something to spend on his way. And then they now put sand, put everything on top of him on the something. Are you telling me that that money will remain there? The second day you get there, you see that they have already did that thing. Because no one is going to spend, he's going to, because people understand. It's going to be destroying the ground. It's going nowhere. The 
chicken that die cannot eat, uh, the chicken that die cannot eat corn. Where the tree falleth, that is where it's going to remain. And that is the reason why, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Only one life. Consecrate it unto your Savior, consecrate it back to your God. Because at the end of the day, you're going to give account of what you have done in the body. And that is the way I want us to see that thing that whatever thing you do here, there is an everlasting reward. And you will not lose your reward, I will not lose my reward in Jesus' name. Point two, the practice of consecration in turning many to righteousness, the practice. The practice. First, as soon as you give your life to Jesus, the next step you take is you, you pray for sanctification and baptism in the Holy Ghost. We're talking about practice now. What do you do? You give your life to Christ. And then as you keep on serving him, keep on following him, then they talk to you about sanctification. Say you need to sanctify. Opportunity of Adamic nature. Pray for sanctification. After sanctification, they, tell you, they talk to you about baptism in the Holy Spirit. What do you do? You pray unto God, and God baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. From this point, you are now beginning to bring others to Jesus. Let's look at it. What we talk about this morning, you'll be able to have patience, because if your heart is sanctified now. You have patience. You'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to endure hardness as a soldier of Jesus Christ. It is the sanctification of your heart. Then, praying and fasting for God's work to be progress is part of consecration. Also, visiting new believer and showing love unto them is part of turning many to righteousness. And I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Like as we talk, we're talking, mostly we're talking about uh, sanctification. I mean, we're talking about consecration. Therefore, uh, the scripture is telling us if we are to do it successfully. In Romans chapter 6, verse 13. Romans chapter 6, verse 13. If we are to do it successfully, that there will not be any uh, anything uh, that is going to spoil all our efforts. He said, "Neither yield your member as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your member as instrument." of righteousness unto God. You know, is that what we're talking about? If you are to turn, if you are to, I mean, the practice of consecration, turning many to righteousness. And these are all what you need. Also, we must know, the reason why we are doing this is that in First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, First Corinthians chapter six, verse twenty. Why are we doing this? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Do you see? So you can't say because uh, this thing. If you are to turn others, if you are to go into the practice. Of turning other to righteousness, then it means that you yourself must be a shining of blessing. 
So I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 6, verse 19. Romans chapter 6, verse 19. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yield your member servant to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so, now yield your member servant to righteousness, unto holiness. Now, you can see very clearly in verse 24, when ye were the servant of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. <clears throat> but now, being made free from sin, and become servant of God, Ye, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Praise the Lord. So you can see that the practice of righteousness, the practice of consecration in turning many to righteousness, look at what the life you are living and then it will help you with this scripture, will help you to know that this is what I was before, and this is what these people are going through now. And by the special grace of God, as you uh, made up your minds to do something for God, you through you, many will return to righteousness in Jesus' name. I say many will return to righteousness in Jesus' name. So um, let's look into the last uh, point, the power of consecration. The power of consecration. What are the power are behind consecration? As what we have said before, when you have consecration, I mean, say the power. What is the benefit? If you have the power of consecration, you have the ability, you have the strength. The Lord give you power to bring more so to the to the kingdom of God. What are the benefits? Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. We just want to look into it to see. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty. But in a great house, there are there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of art, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. Now, we're talking about the power of consecration. If you prepare yourself, you have to choose the benefit. One, more grace. The power of consecration. You see, what is the benefit? Number one, more grace. More faithful from the Lord. Spiritual strength. You see, you see there are many... Uh, there are many vessels, but in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of art, and some to honor and some to dishonor. What do you choose? You choose the one to dishonor, to, to the honor. You choose the one to the honor. You choose the one that will give you everlasting joy at the end of the day. The benefit of power of consecration is more grace, more faithful, spiritual strength, 
answer to prayer. Protection over our life. You know, when you have power of consecration, you bring in others into the Lord, into the righteousness, you turn in many unto righteousness. God give you more of his grace. God give you more of his faithful. He give you spiritual strength. He give, he answer prayer, protections over our life because we are now become the apple eyes of the Lord. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Why? Because there is a benefit in, in the power of consecration. You are now doing, you bringing joy into many, uh, many families, many lives. And then you are turning many to righteousness. And it has a result because let's look at it between. Nothing go for nothing. If you don't give anything, you cannot get anything. So if you consecrate your life, the Lord will release his grace upon you. He will release his power upon you so that you can bring others into the kingdom. But if you do not surrender, I mean, if you do not consecrate, you are just a Christian. You just come to church. Maybe you are just listening now. What is the, is, what make a difference from what you are hearing? Even though someone come here and that person is the best teacher in the world. And he say point number one, point number two, but number three, you can write it that you can do everything. You can, in fact, you say, oh, I enjoy the, the, this man's preaching. I do this, I do that one. It's fine. But not until when you begin to live that life out. Not until when you begin to do something that will have a reward in the sight of God. You can even do whatever thing you want to do without you doing something. It is not the hearer of the Lord that are justified. It is not the preacher, preaching of the preacher of the Lord that are justified. It's those who are doing it. Brethren, let me say this one very clearly. I, I say it to my brethren. Because God gave me the privilege to preach today does not mean that if the trumpet should sound. It is it's still a part of my life to examine myself. And if I want to have a reward over there, it becomes my duty to think and say, what can I do for my Savior? If he gave his life for me, if he died in the cross of Calvary, what can I give back? Hey, I'm the one who is going to decide that. If they say, oh, the Lord is in control. When they say this, before I was born, the Lord is there, he's, he's controlling everything. What are you doing? Brother, sister, what are you doing for your Savior? If the Lord should come now, what can you do? What can you, what will you present? What will I present? Like as I said, giving me a, a privilege, opportunity to preach does not qualify me. Like one of the Bible stories we listened to, maybe one of last week. He said you can, some people say they have been in the church for 40 years, they have been in the church for 30 years. That one does, cannot open the pearly gate for you. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The book of life, when it's open, it is when my name, your name is there, before the, the angel in the pearly gate will allow you to come in. So think about where you're going to spend eternity. I should think about where I'm going to spend eternity at the end of the day. You know, it's just like, uh, I mean, within myself, I would just think, yeah, soon 2020 has gone now. 2019, just like that, we are saying this. Before we know 2020 has gone, we are today now is 20. 20, 20. We are today 20. And then before you know what's happening, 2020 has gone. We are in 2021. What have I done for the Lord now? And I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. Joy of the Holy Spirit from God. That's what makes it worthwhile. You know, all these things you have mentioned, protection, spiritual strength, answer prayer, more grace, faithful. These are the benefits. That's what makes it worthwhile. Because of the love of God and this bread, the love of God for the brethren, and the assurance of making heaven while doing God's will, keep believer going at all times. See, when you are doing the will of God, 
you are doing your best. You go out for evangelism. You pray in your house. You say, Lord God Almighty, I bring our community before you. Whatever thing you have done is good. When you pray in your house and you pray with a pure heart, with a perfect heart, it's registered in heaven. It's only when you have a misunderstanding, you keep it inside your heart, and you you are a kind of person who believes to this person, you believe to that person, on positive pride, everything is in there, and then you kept everything and you are still doing all these things. Whatever thing we are doing, when we have all this in our heart, does not have record in the sight of God. It can have record in the eyes of men, but it doesn't have any record in the sight of God. And at the end of the day, you see, at the day I know, it will not be what we are going to see at the end of our life in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's um, know that uh, the great God that left his own glory, came down to this world, died in the cross of Calvary, he did it for a purpose. Do not let that purpose be in vain in our life. If you are not doing anything, yours is to just come to come and get goody goody. Once you get it, boom, you run away. Even while as we are preaching now, some people, they either put their children will be listening to it, they are saying, ah, this one, I must get this thing done. I must do this thing. If you have a timetable, you are just to save you. I mean, you program everything. I'm going to spend one hour here. I'm going to spend two hours here. Don't just use that thing as a camouflage, as a, just say, ah, I need to finish this work. Like I said, there is no any other time. Why is it that the time you're supposed to listen to the word of God? That is the time that you are using to do your uh, work. Your work, uh, your work at work. Yeah, if I don't do it. If, let's assume that you are, uh, maybe something happened, emergency. With the, your working place, say, on the most line, you are, you are on the, the way to the, either you are going somewhere, something very emergency. Then your work, say, on the most you must do it. It's just an excuse. When you see the importance, you see the importance of consecration, you know the power of consecration, you're not going to allow anything to stand on your way. Because at the end of the day, the work we are struggling for now, it is true that it is good, be that it's not the work it's not supposed to be. That's what the scripture say. Then not to be standing. God is not, let God be number one in your life. We're talking about consecration, power of consecration. You know, people will be wondering, with all this thing that is happening, how is this person survive? Because more grace upon your life, more faithful of God upon your life, spiritual strength, answer prayer, protection, joy of the Holy Ghost upon your life. And that will make it worthwhile. And I pray that God Almighty will help us in Jesus' name. As we, you have listened to this very uh, uh, message, and as we have discussed together, uh, without any shadow of doubt, you understand our consecration while turning many to righteousness. What is consecration? That is what we first of all sort out. And then we move from there. Uh, we move to the, the people in the world. How do they do their own thing? I mean, they, they, they run up and down a teacher, an auditor, an engineer. What, what do they do? They create a time to do this job so that they will not have any fault. So what should we as a believer do? And we see other group of people in the world, they dedicated their life to the things, the mundane things of this world. That something cannot stand the test of life that when they close their eyes in death, they cannot, do things that doesn't have eternal value, and ours should not be so. We should wake up to righteousness. And I pray that God Almighty will touch our life. This message will not stand against us in the day of judgment in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever way it's being preached, you have heard it that it's a part of what you should do. Our consecration, why turning many to righteousness? So what are you doing? If the book of records should bring should be bring out now, right from January to this December 20, what have you done for the Lord? Do you have anything? Think about it. Do you have anything to present to, to your maker? 
think about it. Let's go before the law and commit and say, if you have not been doing anything tangible, things that have eternal value, it's not just to say, you are doing this job, you are making this money, you are making this one, you are doing that one. No, that's not what we are talking about. It's good. It's part of what we should do. But the important thing there is that if the trumpet will sound today, what actually? And if if our life should be examined, are you consecrating? Because God save you, it does nothing go for nothing. We are saved to do what? To serve. We are saved to serve. Are you serving God in holiness and righteousness? All the days of our life? Let's examine ourselves. Let's look into our lives. This is not the day of judgment. Today is not the day of judgment. It's just the day of examination. I might say I've said it to you. Having privilege of talking to you does not give me a license. Thinking that, oh, I am there. I, 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 I. No, it doesn't give me anything. I actually have to follow what I'm saying. And I pray none of us will be left behind. And our labor will not be in vain in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's commit ourselves to the hand of God. Let's plead unto God to help us. Any area we need to do, if a man therefore purge himself, when they say, they say the Lord is in control. The second uh, Corinthian says, this, if a man therefore purge himself, why can't you say if a, a, a God, is, God is not going to purge it for you, you are the one who is going to do it yourself. Let's commit ourselves into the hand of God and say, Lord, Let's commit ourselves to the hand of God. Second, uh, Second Timothy, chapter two, verse twenty-one. If a man therefore forge himself, if a man therefore, a man therefore forge himself, it's not God is going to do it for you. I am the one who is going to look into my life. Am I con am I committed? Am I consecrated? And look at the level of my consecration. Is that part of consecration? When the message is going on, you are doing your uh, your work, and then you are just using one ear to be hearing, and then your heart is not there, and then you say, "Oh, oh, what have you? Oh, I'm just in the, I'm just coming from the church." At the end of the day, if it's being way on balancing, <coughs> what will I say to God? What would you say to God? If a man. Therefore, purge himself. From this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master use, and prepare unto every good work. If you want God to use you, if you want God to, you want to serve God in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life, and you want your labor not to be in vain, this only one life that God has given unto us, we should use it to do what? To serve him. This is a privilege. This is an opportunity for us. Tomorrow might be too late. Brothers and sisters, this is opportunity. Let's surrender all unto the Lord. And the Lord will never let us be ashamed in Jesus' name. Let's call upon the Lord, and the Lord is here to answer our prayer. Let's plead unto God. Lord, here I am. Be honest with yourself. You, are not, you don't have enough time for God. You rather go to your work, you rather go to this, you rather go to that. There's no time for the things of God. Even your quiet time, your devotion, your family devotion, how is it going? It's part of consecration. If you consecrate yourself to God, you do your devotion. You will pray unto God before you leave home because you know the consequence. Let's call upon the Lord. Brother, pray. Sister, pray. And if you know your salvation, the salvation you are saying have K-leg, how, how, how do we say K-leg? Because you are, saying you, you are just, you can't struggle. It's no matter how struggle. You have to come to that conclusion that you know that you are not born again. All what you need to do is to say, Lord Jesus, I know I cannot save myself. I know that I'm a sinner. 
I repent from all my sin. I have said that you die in the third day you rose up from the grave. Let it come from the bottom of your heart. Knowing that when anything happens now, whatever thing a man sow, whatever a man sow is what he's going to read. If you don't belong to Jesus Christ when you are alive here, it is, you know, at times many people they say, rest in peace. May so rest in peace. They say they be praying. Somebody who has gone, he cannot even hear what you are saying. No, is it God that is going to listen to that prayer or the anger? Whatever a man sow is what he's going to read. You don't do anything for God. Don't think of all this kind of fake prayer. They say, uh, may the soul rest in peace. Maybe they just say for saying say. Because the soul, the person who is, uh, who is living riotous life here, and you're now praying that the soul rest in peace. Where is he going to be resting in peace? Where? Rest in peace in hell? Those who saw somebody who doesn't know Jesus, somebody who doesn't accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior, then so is going to rest in peace. Don't let us deceive ourselves. To the truth, say you shall know the truth, the truth you set you free. Let's commit ourselves to the hand of God. This only one life, I surrender it unto you, Lord. If you, you left your own glory, you came down to this one to die for me in the cross of Calvary, then I surrender my life unto you. And see, when you do this prayer, you pray with all your heart, with all your mind, and you determine to serve the living God, your life will never be the same. I can assure you, because it's something we have practiced, something I have practiced, and then God has, by his grace, uphold me. Though I'm not saying that a trial will not come, temptation will not come, but they will come, they will not prevail over your life. Because this only one life you have given it to God, you are serving God, you, you consecrate it unto God. He that touches you, touches the apple of his eyes. You have consecrated to God. Whoever is going to touch your life and successfully, must first of all touch Jesus. You consecrate it unto Jesus. Very, very important. And as you do it, you never regret of serving the living God. You never regret of surrendering your life, consecrating your life to Jesus. It's not just a coming to the church you, you want to let it be right from the bottom of your heart. And I pray that God Almighty will put us to the end in Jesus' name.